What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and today I'm one with the Force in a review of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. For the longest time, Star Wars games have always been the butt of the joke in the gaming industry, mainly being flops that never amounted to much or being fronts for microtransactions that were utter crimes. We were in a new era of Star Wars games that paled in comparison to the legendary titles of KOTOR and the original Battlefront series. But with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order releasing with some epic moments giving Star Wars fans some hope to see this end of the drought, the focus now turns to the sequel and seeing whether this momentum has some life to it or if it's just hallucinations and grandeur. The Star Wars Jedi Survivor live up to the original IP? Is it worth buying? I give the good, the bad, the ugly, and answer these questions in my final verdict. Let's force choke some stormtroopers and become one with the force right into this. One of the best parts of this game has to be the gameplay. It's very rare to see in sequels, but the combat has only gotten better from its predecessor. The expansion of the many stances you see in the game definitely gives this title a much needed boost compared to the previous installment. Each stance gives you the advantages and disadvantages that really opens up the many ways to play. Single and double sided stances were the same from the previous games, but definitely were kept early on to give fans some cool ways to fight. The cross guard is for the higher damage output, but slower movement that is similar to Kylo Ren or Darth Vader. Dual wield gives you speed and pure attack power, which can devastate opponents in bursts but leaves your defenses down. Even the blaster stance gives you a badass way to mix between being a bounty hunter and Jedi, getting ranged attacks with good close combat ability in the loss of defense. Each of these stances, as well as your force powers, have the ability to be upgraded heavily in their skill tree, which adds more ways to customize Cal. What's so great about these expansions is that it feels like Cal did not lose all of his skills or abilities from the previous story. It was more like he's expanding on what he already knows and is only growing as an experienced Jedi Knight. The combat of this game is also very well balanced, where it does give you a challenge to know the different mechanics and movesets of who you face. The system is way more complex and advanced rather than just the hack and slash we have seen in previous games. Not gonna lie, I did enjoy games like Force Unleashed, but Jedi Survivor does give more depth to the combat systems that come along with with Star Wars. Facing off with new ways to navigate or combat enemies does give this game new ways to play which does make this feel like it has a replayability. It never felt so good to be a Jedi hacking and slicing away at dumb stormtroopers, definitely an A tier in their gameplay. One of the most important aspects of any Star Wars IP has to be the story. What most people expect from games like Jedi Survivor is that they at least add more to the lore of the universe that gives context to the world we know and love. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order had really set up a great backstory of Cal Kestis and his journey staying hidden as a Jedi. The story really portrayed the difficulty of the Jedi living in the post-order society and trying to become part of the world while staying hidden, giving Cal meaning to his life to protect other Jedi and force sensitive children from the Empire was a cool concept and it really showed how brutal life was. Jedi Survivor does a great job setting up the events of what is happening at the start of the game with a badass cinematic reviewing the story up until this point, painting the picture for the new or returning player. Cal is completely different than who he was in the start of the first title. A seasoned Jedi Knight with a new crew definitely gives the vibes of Anakin in the way he is calm and collected in major points of the opening. But what I really love the most about the story are the themes they are emphasizing compared to the previous game. Jedi Fallen Order was more about finding meaning in your life and becoming more than what you've ever imagined. While Jedi Survivor is more of a contrast to this and has Cal faced with the fear of losing everything you care about in the pursuit of your goal. Cal's hatred for the Empire is having him lose what he cares about most and being alone is his one of his biggest fears and what causes him the most pain. The constant battle we each have over the dark side with emotions like anger and sadness is always present in this game. Jedi Survivor finds ways to improve the story from the previous game by including these themes which gives the audience more to cling to in the journey to defeat the Empire and also complete their goals. One of the best aspects I enjoyed from the game was the use of customization. I always found it to be a fun aspect to be able to customize my own Star Wars character and bring around my droid kicking some ass. Right off the bat, the customization had only gotten better in Jedi Survivor compared to the previous installment. Instead of just choosing between which poncho you are wearing, you get to customize everything about Cal as a whole. Want Cal going full Lando Calrissian outfit? Want Cal to rock a hillbilly beard and take down the Empire? You can do that too. Giving the player more ways to customize your character is only a positive for me, and to be honest, it's quite hilarious to see all the different combinations you can have. Adding more components to changing of your lightsaber was also pretty cool too. One criticism with this has to be but not being able to change your colors of your lightsaber to be different depending on the side. I felt like giving us the ability to diversify would have been pretty dope, but either way, customization was a good aspect overall 
which is a plus for sure. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. One of the problems I had with Jedi Survivor in my playthrough was a lack of music. Star Wars was always known for having one of the greatest tracks in all of the movies and shows, and it was sort of disappointing not having to have this in the game. I mean, there are so many you can pick from, and LucasArts had done such a great job in Jedi Fallen Order and including some of them in certain parts of the game. Like no Imperial Mark, no Duel of the Fates, or even others that make the moments feel more epic. Not to spoil anything from Fallen Order, but one of the key points of the game when the intensity gets to a breaking point one small tune that was from Revenge of the Sith started playing and my heart literally stopped with how cool the moment was. Any Star Wars fan that heard that tune knew what was about to happen. Music is such an important part of the Star Wars series and you literally can't tell me that you can avoid all semblance of this in this game entirely. Never really understood why game developers that have access to so many good tracks refuse to use them when they literally can make the game even better if they did. One of the flaws of Jedi Fallen Order was a lack of enemy variety and it seems like Jedi Survivor falls to the same problem. Most enemies have the same basic movesets, basic fighters with blasters that can easily be taken down, heavy units with many shots that are harder to take down, and a sword-wielding fighter that excels in counters and are more up and close and personal. Other than that, we're talking about the most basic of any fighters I've seen in a Star Wars game. Now, I can give them some credit for creating more animals to fight, which does open up some new experiences. However, they seem too easy to fight and do not warrant much of a second take because they can be handled with little to no problem. One thing that made the previous game better was that even if they didn't have as many type of guards to fight, they were definitely harder to face in these types of altercations. I think Jedi Survivor made it too easy to defeat enemies in this game, making it feel more like a cakewalk when these guards should be way harder. Don't get me wrong, I know stormtroopers are supposed to be dumb and all, but this is pretty sad to see how useless they are and basically trying to take down Cal as a threat. And with the bad, we have to talk about the ugly. One of the grossest aspects of this game has to be the state of the game upon its launch. It's pretty sad to see a game that has so much hype behind it basically releases like it should be on a Nintendo Switch rather than next-gen consoles. On the PC, PS5, and Xbox Series consoles, there are constant frame rate drops, in certain cases, games that just can't render textures at all. In my playthrough, I literally watched characters fall into place or float like they were Princess Leia flying through air from The Last Jedi. It's embarrassing for developers to have to put out a statement saying that we're sorry to all their fans when charging top tier prices for a game that should have not had any of these problems. Imagine buying the collector's edition and being unable to play the game you spent all this money for. That is sickening and honestly should never happen. Playing on performance mode literally doesn't change anything about the experience and just makes the frame drops worse and happen more often. What's worse is that EA has no update in site and is expecting the fans to sit there with their thumbs up their ass and wait for a patch to be shadow dropped. It honestly makes you want to force stroke those that made the decision to drop this before it was officially done. Like knowing full well that this was still broken, they put it out anyway? That's just bad. Why can't developers get this right at this stage of the game? It's the question that plagues so many at this point and unfortunately, Jedi Survivor falls into the same issue that has been plaguing their game since its release. I was playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor, we can see some aspects that are great as well as straight up bad. The gameplay and story really give me such a good feeling about seeing Star Wars IP actually giving more depth to the lore of the universe rather than just putting subpar movies that only hurt my soul. Building on great characters like Cal and his crew gives me the feeling of the original gang trying to save the universe but on a much smaller scale. However, the release of the game definitely left me with a taste of green milk in my mouth with how horrible the frame rate and glitches were right from the start. The practice of releasing a game before it's officially done should be banned and should be considered a crime. I give Star Wars Jedi Survivor an 8 out of 10. It has some really great aspects that further the story from the previous installment and add more elements that make it feel different than just the standard story. If the glitches and crashes weren't as evident as they were, I'd put this as a game of the year candidate hitting in the lower nines but since EA is too grubby to do that, it sits safely at an 8. This game definitely worth buying now, but if you do mind the glitches and frame rate drops, then you could wait a few months until the patch is officially in that can fix the game. Thank you everyone for watching. What do you think about Star Wars Jedi Survivor? And let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you like this type of content. You'll be supporting the channel going forward, and you'll see the next video when it pops up. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys.